Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today we will add a joystick to our game. Well, close enough to a joystick. It will allow us to move the player in any direction we want. That is going to be a lot of fun to add. But first, we got two new supporters of the channel. A new member on YouTube named Roman Archonskin. Archos Archoskin. I most certainly butchered that name, but I appreciate the support. Thank you very much. And we also have another big supporter of five coffees. That is very generous of you. Thank you very much, Lena Ing. Lening. I'm most certainly not pronouncing it correct, but thank you very much, both of you. I very much appreciate the support you're giving. But now, let's get back to the episode. Before we start, this channel have a Discord server where you can discuss and ask questions about the tutorials of this channel. Or maybe you just want to swing by and say hello. We will also use GitHub throughout this tutorial. There you can check the most recent code, but also code from previous episodes. That comes in handy when something works differently on your side compared to what you see in the episode. And for the people that want to go the extra mile to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee page and also a membership option on YouTube with some basic perks. With that being said, let's get back to the episode. Last episode, we added animations to our game. First, we went over how the sprite sheet is built up, so we know how to manipulate the index in the sprite array to achieve a animation. We then added the method that will be called each update to ensure that we have a stable animation. Here we can also change the speed if we want. Then all we had to do is to use the animation index in the sprite array and we got animation. Sweet huh? Now let's add a joystick to our game. First we need an idea about what we are trying to create. We need some way to move our player in any direction we want. That is 360 degrees, so not just left, right, up or down, but actual 360 degrees possibility. And a joystick makes this possible for most game controllers, so why don't we add one? The idea is that we have a spot, a circle for example, on our phone as part of the user interface. Once we press down inside that circle and then start moving that finger, the angle the player moves will be the angle between the finger and the center of that circle. Depending on the difference now between the position of the finger and the center of the circle, we get a different speed for the players X and Y. Let's begin and see how we can uh, create this. And since we're going to work in our game panel and mostly in the untouch event, uh, code here or we're gonna start here at least and do a lot of calculations and to make sure that our game panel don't get too big too cluttery we're gonna create a new package and a new class to handle our untouch events so first let's open up our project here and our main package right click new package and we can name this package inputs inputs and of course in the input package we're gonna add a class let's call it touch events yeah that's a decent name and we will need a constructor public touch events and we're gonna create this in the game panel so we need a game panel here so game panel game panel and of course we need brackets here and private game panel Game panel. This dot game panel equals game panel because we're gonna need to get values from game panel, but also be able to send back values such as the new position or the position of uh, the finger, for example, and also whether or not we are touching the screen or taking our finger off the screen. So we need some sort of information going back and forth. But uh, yeah, so far so good. But we're gonna cover sending data back and forth to the game panel class in a little bit. First, we need to draw the circle on our screen. And we need a method for that. So public void draw and canvas C. And make sure we import that. Can minimize the import. And in here, we wanna draw the circle. So canvas have a, a way to draw circles. So C dot draw circle and here we are setting the position 
it's asking for center X and center Y, the radius, and then of course paint. So we're just gonna pick a position where we're gonna draw the circle, and the circle will be drawn around that position. Uh, we can say center X or X center, Y center, radius can be just radius, we can call it radius, and then uh, circle paint and we're gonna get to why we need a specific paint for this and we're gonna go ahead and create these so up here private uh, float right it's requesting floats and not integers yeah float float x center y center radius and then private paint circle circle paint and of course we need to import paint, import class. All right. And we want the circle to be in the center of the phone and down, so down center. So for X, that will be half of the width, which is equal to 540, since it's 1080. And center Y, we're gonna set to 1300, I think is good. Radius, we can play around with a bit. How big do we want the actual touch touch size or the circle to be? Uh, we don't have to move only inside the circle when we move the play. We, we just need somewhere to start and then whatever the angle gets is going to determine the uh, speed for the player. Not if we are still inside a little circle. So the circle doesn't have to be big. It just needs to be big enough for our finger to... Uh, enter. So let's just say, let's try 100. So 100 in radius, 200 in diameter. And circle paint is equal to new paint. And let's make the circle red. So circle paint dot set color, color dot red. And that's good enough for now. What we need to do now is to go to our game panel. We can minimize that actually. And in here, we can create a uh, touch event object. So right underneath our game loop, I think is good. Private, touch event, touch events. And we create a game loop here. Let's create the inputs first. So touch events equals new touch events and then we give this all right and inside our render we can just draw it before the player it doesn't really matter too much uh, so touch events dot draw and then we send the canvas in there let's see if that works and uh, hopefully we get some circle yes we do so we have the circle but uh, let's make it hollow so it's not a filled circle, it's actually just a circle with a red uh, border. And we can do that by going into our circle paint object here. And we need to give two values in here. First we need to say circle paint dot set style. And we go paint dot style dot stroke. Here we have, if we wanna no, a border, in this case for a circle, or if we want it to be filled. But we want to use the stroke value, so we get a border rather than just a filled circle. And then we need to say circle paint dot set stroke width. How big should the width of this border be? And we can play, we can set one, which is default, so we wouldn't have to say it. But let's say five. We can always change it if it looks if it looks bad. So let's give this a try. Yeah, I think that is that's perfect. If we didn't call set stroke width and try it again, then it's just one pixel, it's very thin. And if we didn't set the stroke, well we get the filled version. So stroke and a width of five, I think is perfect. And now we want to know if the player clicks inside here or outside. If it's a event inside, you're clicking down, then we should have a printout saying you're inside. If I press outside, 
well, I'm outside, so nothing should happen. But we need to know if we are pressing inside of it. So let's go ahead and add that. Since we're going to do all the touch events calculations inside this class and not game panel, we will we'll just use game panel as the start for, on, for our touch. And then we send the event, the motion event, to touch event. So let's create a method that can handle it. So public void touch event motion event event which is what it's coming in yes it is and let's make it a boolean actually so we can do return here so return true and now let's go into game panel and remove all of this i don't think we need any of this for now no let's let's just remove it and then call return touch event dot touch event event because this method needs a ret return so it returns whatever this one returns which is going to be true so in here we're gonna add the switch switch event dot get action and now we were checking if the player is touching down. So case motion event dot action down. And we get this little pointer. And then add some brackets because we're going to have more code than just one line. And if you get some sort of error message here that this switch expressions isn't supported in the Java version you have or running right now in your Android Studio, there's two options. You can either increase it or you can work around it for now. And to change it, you would need to go into settings. You can Google that and come back later. Or you can just change how the switch statement is displayed. So then you can just use the older version, which is instead of this arrow and then brackets, do something like that and break at the end. And now the code is going to happen in here. And that's just in case you have the error. All right, so in here, we wanna check if the player is pressing inside or outside the circle. And how do we do that? And we have all we need, which is the center of the circle and also the radius of the circle. And to do this, we're going to use some math called trigonometry. Maybe you used it in school, maybe you haven't, but it's very useful to calculate if you're inside a circle or not with the given values or information that we have in our case, for example. First, let's just get the position of the event, meaning wherever the player is pressing, we need the position of that. So float x equals event.get x. Float y equals event.get y all right and then we need to calculate the distance in x and y from the center of the circle and to the event which we can do by just getting the difference but in absolute we can't have a negative length and instead of calling it the x difference we can just call it a because a squared plus b squared equals c squared so it gives a quick hint that we are using trigonometry when someone looks at the code. So float a is equal to math dot absolute value of x minus uh, x center, which is the center of the circle. And then float b equals math dot abs, not maths, math abs, y minus y center. And float c is equal to math dot hypot, which is hypotenuse. So c is equal to hypotenuse. And what we do here is just to give a and b. But it's returning a double, so we're just going to recast this to a float. Because we don't need that precision. And then all we have to do is to check whether or not the value c is shorter or equal to the radius of the circle. If it is, then we know that the player clicked inside. So if c is less than or equal to radius. If it is, 
we can call a sysu and say inside. And if it's not, we say else sysu outside. And let's run this and see what happens. And let's move this to the side here, about there I think is good. Bring up logcat. And let's see, I'm just gonna click around here. Outside, outside. What happens if I click just next to it? Outside, down over here, still outside, inside. Yeah, inside, inside, inside. Just about almost outside, still inside. We have outside, just inside, we have inside. So yeah, now we can check whether or not the player presses inside the circle or not. Beautiful. And to demonstrate how this triangle will look, because we have three points, or rather two points, and then we just connect them to a triangle, and how that triangle is going to look will be different, of course, as we move the finger around. So let's, uh, let's actually draw this triangle. And to do that, we will first need to save wherever we push down. So let's create two new fields, as they're called. Uh, private float x touch and y touch. And let's create a boolean as well. So private boolean finger, not finger down, but uh, touch, touch down, we can call it. And down here, if we are inside the radius, we can remove these actually. Uh, no, we can keep them for now. If we're inside the radius, we want to say touchdown equals true, because we want to start drawing it only if we started inside the circle. We cannot start outside the circle, move into the circle, and then start drawing it. We need to touch down inside the circle. And then we can just say x touch equals x, y touch equals y. And we can, you know what, we can remove, we can remove this actually. We don't need the else and we don't need the inside. We're gonna see if we're inside or not. And then we can add another case. Let's just copy this, goes faster. And after here, we can say, instead of action down, action move. So move event is only happening if we have touch down and then start moving our finger. That's a move or an action move event. But inside here, first what we're gonna check is if we are touch down, we're going to, well, Move, uh, draw the triangle and change the value for the triangle. If we are not touched down, we're just gonna ignore it, but yeah. Well, if we are touched down, we can just copy this and update them, but x doesn't exist here, but event.getx does, and then event.gety. So we're just updating the position of x, y, uh, x touch and y touch, as long as we are, uh, as long as we started in the, in the circle. And then we're gonna add another case down here, case action up. And action up is, well, as it sounds like we're uh, releasing the fingers, just touch down and then we take the finger off the screen, that's action up. And we just wanna say touch down equals false. And now let's draw the triangle. We're gonna need another paint, so we can say yellow paint. And it's gonna be a simple paint, we don't need the style or anything, we just wanna say yellow paint equals new uh, paint. Yellow paint dot set color, you guessed it, yellow. And now for our draw circle, we're gonna need, well, three lines. A triangle has three lines. So C dot draw line. And we need two positions, so let's just start from x center, y center, to x touch, y touch, and then yellow paint. And the second line will go from the center, c dot draw line, x center, y center, to x 
touch, but Y center, and then yellow paint. And then of course we need the same, but for X. So draw a line starting at X touch to and Y touch to X touch and Y center. And then yellow paint. So that's gonna be the line to the right. So if we give this a try, we should probably have a triangle. And uh, let's add a if touchdown, then we draw it. So let's use that brackets here and move this section in there. All right, I think that's gonna look better. So we don't have this, that giant triangle. All right, I'm clicking it outside, dragging, nothing happens. I'm clicking inside and we had something yellow there and then I start moving it around. All right, beautiful. So what we are going to calculate is this angle right here. Uh, actually, it's gonna be easier for me to demonstrate. So what we're going to calculate is the angle here when we are calculating the speed for X as well as Y. So this little angle right here. And it doesn't really matter where the triangle is. We want to focus on the length of this, tri uh, this line here and that line to calculate the line, the length of the hypotenuse, if I'm pronouncing that correct in English. And by finding out th this length, we can then set correct values for X and Y. So it doesn't really matter if it's on this side or that side we're gonna get the length, the absolute value between those, these two points and of course these two, these two points. And then when we wanna set the actual speed to the player, we just check if we were on the left side, meaning x difference is less than zero, x is more than zero, y is less than zero up here, and y is more than zero down here. That way we can figure out if we wanna increase x or decrease x and the same goes for y. So now we just need to calculate this angle right here. Let's do that. And the next part would be to get the difference or in our case the length into the game panel and then do the calculation in how fast the player is going to go in both x and y directions. And in our game panel we can add a getter of some sort which is a public void set player move true. We're gonna call it like this and the name is gonna be, uh, and it's gonna be obvious why we call it like that because we don't want to move the player unless we are holding down and moving the finger or rather we had a touchdown and we figured out a angle. As soon as we let go of the finger then we stop moving. So we need some way of setting the move to true because if you just do a touchdown and then drag and then just don't move the finger, there's no more events, but we haven't released the finger. So we still want the player to move. Otherwise, we're going to have to move our finger for that player to move, which is not correct. The player is supposed to move as long as we have our finger down in that direction. And then the player should go in that direction as long as we, well, hold the finger down. So when we release it, we're going to set it to false and then the player is going to stop moving. But yeah, uh, in this method, we need the difference in X and Y and we're not going to get the length. We're going to actual difference. So they might be negative because one is going to be bigger than the other. And we want the difference and not the absolute value because we want to figure out if we're going to move up or down or left or right, depending on the value, if it's negative or positive. So what we need here is two floats, and we could of course add float xdiff, etc. But let's ask for a point f, last touch diff. And then we're gonna say uh, move player equals true. We're gonna create that boolean, and we also need to say this dot last touch diff equals last touch diff. Uh, we can scroll up here. Da, 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 da. Underneath the X and Y, I think is good. Private boolean move player. Then private 
point f last touch diff all right so with this one done we can go to our touch events and then in our action move we want to get the actual well x difference and y difference so float x diff is equal to x touch minus x center and of course this will be negative a lot of the times because if we press on the left side of the center this one will be smaller than this one so it will be negative and then if it's negative later we can use that as a uh, check to move the player to the left or if it's positive we move it to the right and the same applies for our y difference is equal to y touch minus y center then game panel dot set player move true and new point f x diff y diff like so now the fun part begins if you like math if you don't like math then the boring annoying part starts so yeah in our update method um we can keep the skeleton doing his own thing this is for the skeleton skeleton and down here we say update player move and we pass in delta so let's create this method and the first we're going to do is to check if player or rather move player is true if it's not return get out of this we don't need to do anything else here uh, because if we don't want to move the player we're not going to do any more calculations for the player move of course and first let's get the uh, uh, base speed so float base speed is equal to uh, th delta times 300 I think we had for our yeah delta times 300 or rather 300 is the variable we use but it returns a double so we're gonna recast this into a float we don't need that super precision so next, we're going to calculate this angle. And to get this angle right here, we're going to take the opposite side, which is y length, and then divide it by the nearby, uh, nearest side, which is the uh, x length here. And we're going to take that value, put it into, I believe it's pronounced arc tan, which is the inverted tan. Uh, don't quote me on that. I think it's called that at least. And then we get the angle, and then we can continue. But let's first get the angle. First, let's uh, get the ratio. So float ratio, ratio, <laughs> ratio, which is equal to math dot absolute, which the opposite was the y. So last touch difference dot y divided by math dot absolute last touch diff dot x now they have now we have the ratio between these two and we can then get the angle so float angle is equal to math dot a tan ratio and the method here a tan there is two problems well one we have an error because it's returning a double uh, we can actually use a double here because we're going to have to recast it over and over because all of these methods are returning a double. So let's just stick to double for now. And then just before we give the value to the X or Y, we uh, turn them over to floats. So we do the conversion at the last stage of the calculation. And the second problem here is that a tan, if we click on it, it returns the angle in radians. But we're not going to turn it over to degrees because we're going to need the radians later. Well, in the next step. But if you try to get the angle only and then print it out, you're going to get... What is this? This isn't the angle. This is something else. So just know that a tan returns, a, uh, or returns the value in radians. So just a quick FYI there. And now the last step is to use sine and cosine to get the actual correct speed for x and y. So for x, we're going to go with float x speed is equal to math dot cosine. And we're going to pass in the angle. 
then float y speed is equal to math dot sine and angle as well. And they both are returning doubles. We don't need double here, so we're going to cast it over to floats. And it's this x speed that we're going to multiply with the base speed to get the actual speed. Uh, same goes for y speed. But before we continue, let's see if it works. So make a quick CISO uh, angle. We're just going to plus angle. Uh, but let's actually go math dot uh, two degrees and then angle because uh, radians won't tell us very much. It's easier with a degree because we know how much 90 degrees are, 45 degrees are, etc. That's much easier to read and get the picture and know what it is. So the next uh, printout will be uh, what we're going to get uh, x speed plus x speed plus uh, we're going to get something like that and then y speed plus y speed and I'm just going to do one more thing in game loop and that is to comment the printout of the FPS out because we don't need to see that right now then we restart this I think are we calling this method? Yes, we are. So let's give it a try and see what we get. Move that up there. Log cat. Remove the previous text. And the speed says we don't. Uh, well, speed says 0.7 for both because it's 44. Seems reasonable. Let's get something that's very a very high angle. 85. And something that is very small, 3, 4. And if we go over, we still get uh, positive values. Yeah, that looks right. Here we should have a very small or tiny angle. Here we should be close to 90. Same here. Small. Yeah, it looks like it's working. If we take a stop and look at it. So here, for example, 71 degrees x speed is going to be slower than the y speed because it's almost at 90 degrees so yeah it looks like it's working so let's go ahead and apply this to the player now uh, first we can comment that out so it doesn't spam so much anymore but first we need to know if the difference was negative or positive in them so all we have to do is to do a quick if last touch diff dot x is less than zero that means that we should go to the left for the x direction at least so x speed times equals negative one because this is going to be positive always and then if we need to go to the left when well, just multiply it by negative one and the same check can be done for y less than zero y speed times equals negative one all right and then just x which is the player x plus equals x speed times base speed y plus equals y speed well what is that uh, y speed times base speed that should work let's give it a try uh, the player is animating we're gonna fix that later but let's see should move down I mean, and if I do a quick two, so depending on the angle or the direction hypotenuse is pointing, that direction is where the player is going, which is what we want. I want to go up, I want to go down, I want to go left, I want to go right, and I want to go around in a circle. That is very nice, very beautiful, but if I let go, the player continues to move. That is not something that we want, so let's fix that real quick. That is because move player gets set to, from our touch event, gets set true here, but we have no way of setting it false. So all we need to do is to add a public void set player, player move false. Move player equals false. And this method right here is going to get called from our action up event. So 
game panel dot set player move false and that should do the trick let's give it a try again the player is just animating let's move down a bit correct down up and let go he stops the triangle is still being drawn the player is still animating but it's not moving away but i can't start outside and drag in and let go i have to start in the triangle beautiful but uh, let's go ahead and fix that so we don't draw the triangle if not touching let's see probably looks a little bit better now and the triangle will be removed of course in time but it's just a way for us to get the idea of the angle but uh, yeah and later on during the later stage of development maybe we have this as a joystick and an arrow that we can point to indicate what direction the player is moving but that's a much much later stage of the game but let's uh, let's make sure that the player is facing the correct way and also that he stops animating when he stands still let's figure that one out and i think we can start with the direction that the player is facing and we're going to do that in our game panel and right under our two commented out uh, calls there we add checks to see if the speed is greater in the y direction then we know it's either going to be facing up or down and if it's greater in the x direction then it's either going to face left or right because we want to face the direction we're mostly uh, going to so for example if we're moving up in like 80 degrees well we're gonna face up but we're still going to move a little bit to the left or to the right i mean it's not perfect we only have four directions for our animation but at least it will be facing that direction we're moving in the most and we can do that check with our x speed and y speed because they are always going to be positive and if the difference is bigger in uh, x then the x speed is going to be faster than the y speed and vice versa so if x speed is greater than y speed we know it's going to be left or right else it's going to be up or down and in here we can check if last touch difference x is greater than zero that means that we are going in the right direction and that's because we're starting with our x touch for the difference so if we're touching to the right side of the center this one is bigger than x so it will positive that means that we're moving to the right so what we say is uh, player face direction equals game constants dot face dot dot face directions dot right else uh, we're gonna copy that and say left else that means that the y speed is faster so if last touch diff diff dot y more than zero uh, play we can copy that but we're going down else we're going up so that looks correct yeah let's give it a try moving down mostly moving mostly to the right mostly to the right left and about there we changed let's go to him go to the center moving up mostly up mostly down mostly left i mean it's the best we can get because we only have four directions but uh, i like it it works and yeah that looks perfect now we just need to stop the animation when the player is not moving and that is simple all we have to do is to go to update animation if uh, not move player we do return but the skeleton is also using this so the skeleton will uh, stop move, stop animating as well no animation no animation but as soon as we start animating the skeleton starts animating too 
And if I stop moving, then the end player stop or the end uh, skeleton stop. We need one way of resetting the animation because it's stuck somewhere. It's stuck in the middle of an animation and that doesn't look correct. So we need a reset animation and I think I think we can call it in this method here. So reset animation. And that method we can yeah, we can keep it here. But all we want to do is say animation tick is equal to zero, but also the animation uh, index is zero. So if we run this now, we should have a much cleaner stop. Should never be able to... Nope. We get perfect reset of the animation as soon as we let go of the finger. But yeah, this is looking really good. It truly allows the player or us to move the player in 360 degrees. Alright everybody, that was it for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, click the subscribe button and also like the video. It really helps out the channel. And for the next episode, I think we're gonna move to flipping the phone on its side so that we got a landscape mode instead of the portrait mode that we have now. So that's gonna be interesting. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care and have a great day. Bye.